Hey everybody, long time no talk. It's been probably three, four months now since I actually made a video to put up on YouTube. Uh, I've been busy the last few months. I just moved to Ottawa. Um, some of you already knew that. Uh, I've been getting a lot of emails from people asking when am I going to post up another vid. I was actually surprised how many emails I actually got. So I appreciate everyone who takes time to watch it. Um, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm doing this kind of for fun and I just want to put it up on YouTube and, and show everyone that, uh, you know, it's basically, uh, as long as you, you kind of follow some steps and things that you learn on the way that, you know, things are easy to do and, and uh, things are easy to learn as you, as you go on. So anyways, if you watched my last video there, you'll see that uh, I went to the Ottawa Train Expo. I keep thinking I want to call it a gala, but no, it's the Train Expo there. Um, they say it's the biggest one in Eastern Canada. I checked it out. It was a lot of fun. I met a lot of people there and picked up a few toys that uh, I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. But uh, um, in a couple of videos ago, I did a Project DCC number two. Uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, working on some uh, other locomotives that I picked up. My SD75i, I was able to sell that. So uh, I picked up a few other toys. Um, if you recall that uh, I said I sent a train off to Texas to get some work done on it um, and it was taking a long time to get it back, I finally have it back and that's going to be my next project working on the uh, SD40-2, uh, the CN. This one was the uh, ready to roll model there. Um, it's missing some parts on there but that's because they were taken off. But um, this needs some work. Uh, I sent it out to get the ditch lights installed on it and when I got it back none of the lights worked and uh, it's actually got a lot of gear noise now and it, it sounds kind of bad so my initial uh, project was when I got it back I was going to replace the light board with a, a better Digitrax decoder and then put some sound into it but if I can't get that gear noise to go away I'm actually probably going to just tear this apart and make it for parts or, or play around with it, sell it, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet but uh, anyways let's uh, move on um, some things I picked up there I went to the show and I learned something uh, exact rail. I picked up uh, this right here, the gondola CP. Uh, what did they call this one? The, the gondola doesn't have any feet on there. But anyway, I picked that up. The reason why I picked it up is because it was twenty-five dollars, taxes included. And uh, the guy was telling me that di uh, exact rail is actually gone direct now. So what that means is basically the only way you're going to be able to pick this up is either one, you pay overpriced vendors who's going to try to buy it at the price you can get it from Exact Rail, and they're going to mark it up to try to make a buck off you, or you can just go right to Exact Rail and uh, pick it up there. But uh, that's kind of disappointing in a way. The, the guy I picked this up off, he's actually clearing all his Exact Rail out because uh, you know he's a little disappointed about that. I'm a little disappointed about that. Um, I was hoping they'd start picking up a lot more Exact Rail and and going from there but uh, if you see any exact rail for a good price now with your vendors definitely pick it up because uh, um, now they're going direct you're gonna have to just go straight right to exact rail to pick it up so um, I put a few items here that um, I've, I've marked it in the last like six months I'll say because I don't know when I made the video but you remember this guy this guy I haven't forgotten about yet he's the one that I actually just destroyed trying to do some weathering kind of hard with the light here. As you can see, I'm in a different room now. I'm hoping the lighting will be a little better. I live on the 27th floor, so I look out that way and I see the whole city there, so it's, it's quite nice, but I got a big window here. Hopefully I got enough light for future videos, but uh, yeah, that's the cylindrical hopper I destroyed. We'll play with that down the road. I'm not going to be using my uh, airbrush anymore inside, so the only way I'll be able to do any weathering like that is going to be on the balcony. I'll do some videos out there, I don't care. We'll be able to get that done. Again, here's the Trinity 64 foot, the BLMA version. I was actually looking at the uh, exact rail when I was at the show, and uh, I honestly think I like the BLMA model of this Trinity a lot better. I'm just showing you this, I've showed it before. Uh, it's still in the box, hasn't moved, hasn't done anything. I've been messing with trains for about three months, four months now, and uh, I'm only just starting to get back into it. It wasn't uh, until uh, I believe a couple days ago I actually hooked up my DCC system and my PR3 back to my computer and uh, I'm going to show a little bit of that here in a little bit. Um, one of the toys I bought, uh, this one here I'm going to be playing around with, a uh, little disappointed because um, I've heard nothing but good things about uh, the Kato, Kato, 
someone want to correct me on that? I have no idea. I'm going to call it Kato. Um, this is uh, another SD40-2 that I picked up. And believe it or not, the ready to roll Atherm version of this is way more detailed than this one. Now, I have a feeling that this one's an older model because when I put this on the track, this is fitted with DC, uh, DCC and sound. Um, picked it up for 200 bucks, taxes included. I thought it was a pretty good deal, but when I put it on the track, I've never seen such disappointing lighting on a, a model, any model. Um, Lifelike has better lighting. Then this guy, this had very low, dim, orange lights. I don't know, it looked horrible. So um, I'm probably gonna be doing some LED uh, installs on this, uh, doing some changeovers. It has the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, loco sound, what, is it? what do they call it here? Uh, loco sound, lock sound, ESU. Apparently that's not very good. And when I did actually put this on the track, it is very quiet can't really hear it there so that might be a toy to play around with at some point but what I do give Kato the uh, appreciation for is it is such a smooth runner the motor in it's super quiet it's it's such a nice smooth very low speed like does run really nice but uh, you know just a few little features detail and some lighting it's just not very good uh, one of my favorite toys that I just picked up I finally picked up a SD70 M2. Uh, this one here is the Genesis model there. Um, I also picked this up with uh, complete DCC with sound, and it's phenomenal. I love it. It's about time that I was able to get uh, the M2 there. Again, my lighting's not very good, but everyone's probably seen these before. I finally own one, so I'm happy about that. Um, just just love it. It sounds great. Um, a few little tweaks there. Uh, I've been messing with some CVs on it, uh, changing some things, and I have a lot of learning to do. If anyone out there can help me out, I want to learn a little bit more about the, the lighting CVs uh, with the ditch lights because me and my buddy Will, he, uh, he got one as well, uh, the Norfolk Southern, and uh, he wants to make it so the ditch lights turn on automatically when you start rolling and the light, the main headlight will dim or uh, get brighter as you move it. So uh, um, I'm going to play around with it, see if it's uh, possible. I mean, I'm sure it is and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, besides that, I really have nothing new to really show you. Like I said, I'm just kind of getting back into it. I'm even a little rough on making these videos. It's uh, been so long, I opened the program, I'm like, man, how do you do this? And I just forgot, so we'll get back into the rhythm of things here. A um, Couple other things here I'll show you. Just like this here. So again, just a review. Before I, I moved there, um, I ended up installing my Zephyr Digitrax just uh, with my program track there making it easy so I can just hook it up and take it down whenever I'm not doing any train work. Um, and then an easy switch to go from my PR3 to my uh, actual DCC so I can try things out and everything. Um, and then this one here was my last project there, the GP40-2. Still looks good and sounds good. Haven't really done anything, just a little dusty, gotta do a little bit of cleaning. And again, there, there's that SD40-2 that uh, my next video will be a project. So that's my uh, little update video here. And uh, um, again, I do want to kind of just, like, I mean, there's lots of videos on YouTube with the, uh, the PR3. Um, it's been done many times. Tommy has great videos out there with the PR3. Um, I just, it's... If you're just getting into DCC, that's the way you have to go. Uh, get a PR3, hook it up to your computer because, um, like I said, my Genesis model there, it came with an address of like 03 and some CVs that needed tweaking. I just put it on the track, opened up Decoder Pro, tells you everything right there. You don't need to know CV numbers. All you have to know is what you're looking for. So lights, horn, sound, anything, click on it, go from there. So. Anyways, uh, stay tuned, uh, enjoy my uh, video there of the expo, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Start a new project, I'm going to actually just get working on it here, so we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.